Okay, are you ready for our Stitch Happens video? Let me just get set up here. Alright, so, sorry about having to postpone the video this week, but I literally walked in today, and I mean on Monday, and there was no AC at all. So, it wasn't a pleasant thing. I walked in here about 5 a.m. on Monday, and there was, it was already 80 degrees in here, so it wasn't very comfortable. And it would have been very, very hard to do a video. Hold on. All right. Just give me a second because the video didn't want to kick in. So, do you guys have any plans for the 4th of July? Um, I'm staying home with family, just having a small cookout, and that's pretty much it. I will be closed on Thursday, which is the 4th of July. So, um, but I will be open all day today, which is Stitch and Bitch Day, normal hours, and all day the rest of the week, Friday and Saturday, normal hours. And I can't find the video. Alright, there we go. Okay, so again, we are open Friday and Saturday. We are closed for the 4th. We are having a sale from today through Saturday, 10% off everything in the store. Um, we're going to do 20% off of kits, but that does not include row by row kits, but any other kit in the shop is 20% off and 10% off of everything else. And we have all those beautiful batiks that I got in yesterday. So those are on sale too. Okay, today is Stitch Happens. We're going to be using the same um, notions and items that we have been using. It's not going to be a long video because even though it looks like it's a little bit much, it's a super easy um, block. So you need a ruler, a marking pen, and a scissor. We're going to be using... Um, Two different red fabrics. You could use one different red, one red fabric. Um, this block all the way up here on the corner is what we're going to be doing today. So we've got, I'm using two different reds, just one red here and the rest of the red are the same. I'm using a yellow, orange, a pink, and one small square of white. We're going to be doing, I've already done some of the block, some of the parts, because just to keep the video from being too too long we're only doing the same exact stuff that we have been doing half square triangles and simple sewing that's all so on the first part of this block what I did is I have the red block and the white block square um, right sides together I do a line from one end of the corner to the other end of the corner and I sewed on one side just a thread width on one side of the line and then what we do is once you do that and you fold it up you have a half square triangle so I am gonna set it uh, once my iron comes on and cut it off I know the bulk off I know that it's gonna look great so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the bulk off you don't need it 
you want to set the seam with the red fabric on top that way um, the seam will go towards the dark side and not show up on the white so you won't have a shadow and we're trying to do that as much as possible throughout this quilt sometimes it's just not possible when you're trying to match up the seams And this is part I, if you're following along. We've got, hmm, one, we've only got three more after this, three more sessions, and then the final one will be assembling the quilt. So we're almost in the home, almost at the end and in the home stretch. Once I'm done putting this together, I'll have, take a few weeks to um, work on the quilting part and then um, yeah I'll take a few weeks to work on the quilting part and then I'll do another quilt along with ruler work so I think that should be a lot of fun so I've already done this with this other triangle so now we have two half square triangles I've done it with these two up here so here we've made one half square triangle by making the block bigger and using a larger starting fabric, and then we're gonna do our diagonal line like we have been. And we're gonna, this time we're gonna sew on both sides of the line. Now we're gonna get two half square triangles that are gonna look just like this instead of one. Um, and there are a few charts out there, and if I can remember today, I will post one. Um, as far as sizes for the half square triangles that you want now I'm going to stitch on a quarter of an inch on both sides of the line I'm not going to cut the thread and take it out all I'm going to do is take it out bring the, the square around and sew on the other side of the line if you're using a quarter inch foot with a guide you can just put the guide right on your line and stitch with no problem and that'll give you a quarter inch seam I think it's going to be really, really fun with the uh, ruler work. Ah, my pleasure, Jill. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Sometimes you never know what people are going to like and what they're not going to like. And I'm, by people like you posting that you're enjoying it, it makes me feel a little bit better. And I know I'm doing something good. I think you're really going to like the um, ruler work because that is so much fun and very very creative okay so all I did was stitch on one side of the line I pulled the thread out and turned it around and then stitched on the other side of the line so hopefully you can see those and then all I'm gonna do is cut right on the line that we did and then we'll have two half square triangles if I can remember, like I said, there is a chart out running around, and you can probably Google it too, um, that will give you what size blocks will make what size half square triangles when you have to make a lot. Good morning, Rose. So again, we have two half square triangles now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set them with the red on top again, just so that the seam shows up on the darker fabric. And again, I do recommend best press, especially with all of these little uh, piecings. It really does help keep the stretch down to a minimum and it makes piecing these much easier that little bit of starch is going to make it go through your machine just a little bit easier okay all right so this is our block it's not a square it's a rectangle all of these blocks piece together really really well so they're all different sizes so basically I'm just going to take this one row at a time and sew them together now I tried to make sure that 
the seams are all going the same way. Um, so this seams are going this way. These are going to go the other way and the other ones are going to go the opposite way. That's just so that when you're trying to um, line up your seams, the nesting will be perfect. And I am just going to chain piece these. I'm not going to stop. Chain piecing is good for some things. It just cuts down on time. It actually does save a thread too. So we've got an odd number of blocks going in this row. So what I'm going to do is I just did these two and these two and I'll add this one to here and then add them together. So what are you ladies, what are your plans for tomorrow? Anything good? Anything fun? I know it's going to be kind of warm here. It's supposed to be pretty warm today, too. Yep. So, have you ladies seen... Um, the radiant the examples of the radiant landscape class that I plan on doing hopefully in August if the logistics work out oh for sales hmm I think everybody's looking for sales we're always looking for sales even me excited about the radiant landscape class if it works together I think that is going to be a very creative um, quilt option a quilt idea that people may not have thought about before and it's going to be a lot of fun Oh, Jill, what a good question. Um, I think it depends on the people. What I tell, I mean, if you're local, what I tell my pe my beginners is not to buy a lot of anything because when they take a class with me, they get to use a lot of my tools and notions. Um, I don't like people to buy rotary cutters and things like that, that in the beginning, that if they're not quite sure what they're gonna like, and I can't see spending money on, um, you know, especially like a rotary cutter because there's so many different rotary cutters out there that it sometimes takes you a little while to find something that you like. But some of the beginner stuff that you can buy that you um, can't go wrong with would be a cutting mat, a good size cutting mat, if you have the space for it. Uh, I like and sell the Sullivan cutting mats because they, one, I like the color. They are red on one side and orange on the other. And with me getting older and needing glasses, the numbers and, and such on the Sullivan cutting mat is, are very, very large. So it makes it a little bit easier. Um, a good pair of scissors. And not necessarily um, the most expensive. 
because believe it or not one of my favorite pair of scissors and they don't sell them anymore as far as i know i haven't seen them are the pink C uh, singer scissors i absolutely love them um, a good small piece small cutting scissors that are good for just snippets and things like that Ugh, i'm sorry my video decided it didn't want to play again um small rulers believe it or not you can use big rulers too but the small ruler especially the row by row rulers that we collect all year uh i mean once a year when they do row by row are a perfect size for doing projects like this for doing binding um they're just a great size and i personally collect them because i get the new ones every year and um i have one in a bag when i go to class i have one by my machine as you can see i have them all over i have a ribbon on it because i put it underneath my extension table so i always know where it is and it just hangs um let me see other beginner items hmm best press i recommend best press to everybody um if you haven't um heard i do not put water in my iron at all ever because no matter how expensive of an iron you buy it is going to leak eventually they all leak at one time or another and if it's going to leak it usually leaks at the wrong time when you have you know white fabric or something pale and pastel underneath your iron and it just will stain it's just not pleasant um I'm trying to think out what else a good beginners you know seam ripper seam ripper you can't go wrong with a seam ripper and they're pretty common um that's pretty much all i mean for a beginner i would say depending on what you're working on eventually you know when you get when it gets to binding you might want some binding clips because if not you have to pin everything and with a big quilt or even a small quilt in your lap you're going to end up getting pins all in your legs and you don't want that um, oh, a big thing, depending on the machine that you have, is a quarter inch foot with a guide. Everything in quilting is based on a quarter inch seam allowance. So, if you aren't really exact with your quarter inch seam, it's very hard to make uh, all your seams match and align. So the quarter inch foot with a guide works really, really well. I happen to sell, and it depends again on your machine. I happen to sell here a um, universal quarter inch low shank foot. And it is $8.99. And it doesn't fit on every machine. And this is what I mean with the guide. So here's your guide. As long as your fabric is up against the guide, not pushed really far and scrunched just using it as a guide and your needle is in the center you'll have a quarter inch seam allowance every time this doesn't work on all machines bernina janome it won't work on huskavana it probably won't work on but it works on most low shank machines like brother baby lock singer those type of machines and I think that's pretty much it for a beginner. I mean, like I said, I wouldn't go crazy until you figure out exactly what you need or what you're comfortable with. Because um, I don't want anybody to waste their money on anything that they really don't need. Uh, a good straight ruler for cutting. That's it. Any hobby, but especially quilting, when you're first starting out between all, you know, the machine and everything else that you buy it's going to be expensive. So I try very hard not to make it too expensive. That way you have more money to spend on fabric because who doesn't want to buy fabric? I hope that answered your question, Jill. And my video is lagging and it's not really, Facebook is not playing really well today. So I don't know if I'm going to see 
your response. But I hope that answered your question, Jill. Here we go. So we've got our three rows. I don't pin a lot normally, but because we have so many seams here, I will pin just at the seams to make sure everything nests and lines up really well. Now to nest, for those of you who don't know, and I've gone over this before, but I will go over it again. By ironing your seams from one row or section to the next in opposite directions. So, We've got one seam going this way on top and the bottom seam is going that way. That's nesting because you can line up both of those seams very easily when you nest and it'll be nice and flat. As long as it's flat, the seams will line up. If you feel it kind of bulky, that means they're not line up, lined up. And it, if you do it correctly, they will nest perfectly every time and they will line up perfectly every time oh jill i just thought of another thing for beginners flat pins these flat i call them flat flower pins um they're longer than regular pins and they don't have a ball at the end so what that means is everything is nice and flat you won't have a bump when it's going through the machine. Oh, good. On the type of machines, Jill, in the beginning, I don't recommend anything expensive. Literally. You can get a brother machine from Walmart for about $199 that will work really really well for you for almost anything until you figure out exactly where you want to go and what you want to do that's all you need and it will last you a long time okay now that these first two rows are pinned together we're going to stitch them now i never stitch over my pins I know people have told me that oh, they always do and they never have a problem. But I've been doing this a really long time. And you can stitch over your pins 9 out of 10 times and not have anything happen at all. And all it takes is once. Not only will you break a needle, that's probably the, the, the least of your worries. But the pin can actually and the needle can ricochet and hit you the needle can get caught in with your bobbin case and put a hit hole at the very least in your bobbin case which means all your tension will be messed up because that hole or dimple causes your bobbin thread to catch and it's not going to be tight or you could do something much worse to your machine where it causes a big maintenance bill so i never ever ever did i say never sew over my pins there you go easy as that now we just have one more row to do and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing I'm just gonna nest my seams <laughs> Pam Pamela it's not it's a t-shirt
It is going to be 110 heat index here in Florida today. I want it to be comfortable, especially if I'm going to be running around. Plus, I have all that nice fabric that I showed you last night that I'm going to be playing musical bolts with. <laughs> when are you going to come and visit me, Pamela? You make me smile. All right. We got to just sew our last section or row down. Hard to believe we've been doing this long enough that we only have three more videos. And then we're going to assemble the last of the quilt top and be ready for some ruler work, which I'm really excited. I like ruler work a lot. Saturday? Woohoo, Pamela! Yay! Um, I love ruler work. I think it's very creative. Um, I, if you haven't figured it out and not one of the people that usually like to follow a lot of patterns, I always change something. And ruler work gives me that opportunity to just have fun. And be very very creative and I get excited when I get to show people how to do it because I just want people to enjoy it as much as I do all right let me just iron this one ah good I'm glad I'm glad you're getting excited so if you haven't bought the sample set of rulers yet you might want to because those are the ones that I'm going to use they're the ones that we've been teaching with right along. And they're the same rulers that uh, I'm going to be teaching the intermediate class with. So you're not going to have to spend a ton of money to take two or three classes. Because the beginner's quilt ruler work is with a sample set. The intermediate ruler work will be with the sample set. And this one will be with the sample set. So it's going to be fun. All right. We are done. There you go. I think it was pretty easy. Um, if you have any questions or comments or need some work, need some help, just post them and I will answer them. I think that's it. I'm going to be posting this video to YouTube once uh, I'm done this, after this morning. Okay. We're going to reiterate, we've got, um, we're not here tomorrow, which is the 4th of July. I'm here all day today. It's Stitch and Bitch Day. We have coffee, tea, and water available for anybody that comes. It's a free sit and so. I never know how many people are going to be here or who, when they're going to come, but it's always a good time. Um, we have our 4th of July sale starting today through Saturday. It's 10% off of everything, 20% off of kits, but it does not include row by row kits. Um, we're open Friday and Saturday, our normal hours. I think that's it. Oh, my pleasure, Jill. Glad you enjoyed it. If that's it and nobody has any other comments, I'm going to say goodbye and see you guys later. You know where I am. I'm always here. Let me know if you need anything. Thanks, everybody, and happy 4th of July.